All right, so now let's actually look at beauty lighting techniques. We've talked about storytelling and why beauty lighting a shot can help with that. So now let's take a look at our two shots and see how we can improve upon our lighting and make the image more interesting. In HGB30, one big component is missing, and that is the sunlight coming through the ceiling windows. Adding that will act as a key light from the screen top left and add shape to the samurai. To help separate the samurai from the background, we will also add a rim light, which will add some nice metallic kicks on his armor and accentuate his arm a little bit. There is the light side of the windows back there, so we can take that as an excuse to kick that up a bit with an extra light. So let's jump back to Katana. We'll work entirely in the shot work of HDB30. Since all the lighting changes now are shot specific, and we can use the gaffer node, which we already created. So right click add 3D light and add an area light or hit A and call it large window light. I won't bother creating a textured light as in this case, since it's just a white diffusish bounce we want. So let's run a live render to see the results. Remember in the scene graph to switch on live update for our new light, so the render updates when we move the light. Expand the samurai location to see him in the viewport. The window opening covers the entire wall, so we need a very large light. And if you look at the AC here, you can see the shadow is relatively straight down and is a little bit soft. And if you draw a virtual line from the edge of the shadow to the edge of the AC, you can see the light seems to come from the ceiling behind the wall. So let's create something similar as a starting point and then adjust the light to taste. Now to really see what the light is doing, I will solo the light. So we just render the new light. And I'll just increase the brightness to read it better. That doesn't look too bad, but I feel like I want to actually reduce the size of the area light to give the samurai a bit more shape and directionality from the left top. Okay, that works for me. Now let's add a little bit of a rim light, just subtle to pick the samurai a bit more out from the background. I'll just use an area light for that. And I'll just call it kick light. You can middle mouse drag the light into the viewport and now you can move the light like a camera, which can help quite a bit. Okay, position wise, this should be okay. I'll just increase the exposure to really see the kick. And this is obviously too strong, so we'll reduce it in a second. Okay, now we get a nice subtle kick on his elbow and that feels pretty good. Now with all the lights on, my top light feels to be flattening him out a little bit too much. So just let's adjust the size a bit more and make the light smaller again to give him a bit more contrast. Remember if you want the light AOVs, switch on the new lights in the DL settings node. Okay, adding the top down light and the kick really helps. So I'm quite satisfied with the outcome. We could work on it a bit more by adding another light to wrap a bit more light around his arm on the left side, but I don't want to overcomplicate the lighting. Less is often more. Often when you add tons of lights, your scene ends up looking fake and you'll start peeling off and removing lights again very quickly. Most of my character light tricks end up having maybe two or three lights or four to five lights if the character is moving a lot. Okay, before moving on, let's save the scene file as a new version and render out a new render. Jump to the global node and set version to 2. And now if you disk render the same frame, it will version up the render instead of overwriting the old one. All right, and now just set of disk renders for all the passes. And let's switch to HDB 10 now 
and we'll take another pass at beauty lighting the samurai at the window. Remember to set the frame range in the project settings for HDB10. First frame is 1001 and the last frame 1125. And we want to work on the last frame. So this image is actually relatively nicely balanced. There's not much I really want to do or really want to change, um, except have the window light not wrap around as much to get a bit more contrast. So I will actually push the window light a little bit back. And I'll do that with a transform node in a shot work, since I want to transform the light just for HDB 10. Okay, let's do a live render. So add the transform 2D and assign the window light. And switch make interactive to yes and stack order to last. And now just start moving the light back and scaling it down a little bit. This gives me a little bit more contrast, which is great, but I also want to accentuate the face a little bit more. And for that, I will add a create a second light since that makes it a bit easier to control. I also want that light to be part of the same AOV. And so to achieve that, I'll create a rig under set lights and call it window light. And move the window light as well as the new light under that rig. We need another gaffer just for this shot. And switch on show in incoming scene in window and create another area light in the new rig. Again, I just want to accentuate the face a little bit more and an extra area light is just easier to control. Hit W to move and V to activate vertex snapping. and make the light a little bit bigger. And don't forget to switch off vertex snapping when you don't need it anymore. Before we restart the render, look at the multi-light outputs in the settings node. Some lights are missing as those are specific to HDB30, so we can ignore those. Instead of the individual lights, we can select the window light rig now, which will combine both lights into one AOV. All right, start a new live render. Okay, and that's a bit bright, but I had exposed it up just to see its influence. An exposure of 10 is obviously too strong. Most likely a value of four will work better. So play a bit with the exposure and position to just get his face to stand out a bit more. I'll also adjust the spread which focuses the area light more on his face. The nice thing about this is it gives us a little bit of a highlight so the viewer will really focus on his face. Or the ceiling light, right now it wraps around a little bit too much. So I want to add another kick light for the ceiling light so that when we increase it, we get a little bit of an edge here around the back of his helmet. So I do exactly the same as before and add a rig and call it ceiling. And move my ceiling light into it. And now in the shot work gaffer, add a kick light in that new rig and move it somewhat opposite of the camera. Increase the exposure and restart the live render.
switch the ceiling rig on as an AOV as well. I think my light is too small, so I can't see much influence. So I'm going to make it bigger. That's better. I just want a very subtle edge on the back of his helmet. Okay, now if we switch to the light AOV, that's an easier way to see what is going on. Yeah, let's increase the light a little bit. Obviously, this is too strong, but I just want to see what we get. And now I can adjust the size a bit. Just so that the light wraps around a little bit more, I'll just make it bigger and reduce the exposure. In comp, we can always brighten it up a bit and also the plate in the corner, we might brighten up just to justify the extra kick on the samurai. And all the spec highlights kind of just make his helmet feel a little bit more metallic and a little bit more realistic, which is great. Just also, also adds some interest and draws the focus on him. I'm just going to drop down the exposure a little bit. Um, it is a bit too strong. Um, Focus-wise, I do want the viewer to kind of look at the front of his face more. All right, and now you can render this out, create a new slab comp with your new renders, and uh, do the same for HDB30.